Hello everyone. Um, this video is designed to help you throughout the last lesson of chapter eight that we are studying. And that has to do with polar equation and graphs. Um, as you saw before, I made another video in how to set your calculator to actually obtain um, graphs using your scientific calculator for polar equations. But first, we're gonna talk about what are they and some of the key terms that come into place here. And the key terms have to do with this representation. So you are used to a graph in x, y coordinates where a point in space uh, in a two dimensions can be represented by an x and y coordinate. When, when we talk about polar representation, then you are representing a point still in space, in this case also 2D, that has the coordinates r and theta where r is the modulus, right, of the vector, and theta is the argument. So essentially, in a polar coordinate system, which is based on a, on a point called a pole, you know, an array, so here's your pole right in the middle, you know, I'm gonna try to color that right there, and then you have an array that goes at theta equals zero, and of course that can move, right, to describe the theta, and that's called a polar axis, the polar axis is usually drawn in the direction of the positive x-axis. And all of this information that I just said, it's actually written here. We just described about that. And so if you look at my little attachment here that I put this picture, when you do these representations are not hard, as long as you find r, which is the modulus of the number, um, and then you understand where R is, like for example, in this picture, if you look, right, my, my um, R is uh, four point something, and theta is about what, 40, let's say, somewhere between 30 and 45, maybe 38. So then you put the two coordinates as R and theta, and you put their numbers in. Okay, so let's see how we actually use that. And so if you look here, what you learned in the past that if you have rectangular coordinates, right? So you have the rectangular coordinates as X and Y, and those can be written function of the polar coordinates, right? X is R cosine of theta, which is nothing else but the X component of that vector. Yeah? And the Y coordinate can be written as R sine of theta, and the modulus or the vector, right, the magnitude is r squared equal x squared plus y squared, you know, which is nothing else but the Pythagorean theory in there. And then the position for theta is the y component over the x component. So you pretty much use the information that you already knew from the past, except now we're gonna convert them into the polar coordinates. So we're gonna look at those and go, okay, now I'm giving you the polar coordinates. Can you tell me what does that mean as far as the rectangular coordinates are concerned? So let's see an example on that. So in this point, they ask you to plot each point in a polar coordinate system, then determine the rectangular coordinates of each point. Well, very good. Um, if I am to look at this just by <laughs> picking up the problem from here without calculating anything, right? If I have four and 135, I'm gonna go here on this polar representation. I'm gonna look at the circle that has a radius of four. I'm gonna start counting on that. So I'm gonna go, well, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. So my answer, I know it's going to be on this circle. I'm gonna erase that in a second. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It's gonna be there. Yeah, and then the angle is going to be at, at 135. Well, uh, 135, um, it's somewhere in here somewhere. Yeah. So the intersection between them two, this point right here, that's your point P. But let's see, can we actually prove that? So I'm going to erase this and that for now. I'm going to leave the point P right there, and let's see how we solve this problem. So if we are looking at x, x is not, so remember this is r and this is theta. So x is r cosine of theta. It's kind of like, look, it's kind of like saying this, here's my r, 
here's my x, here's theta. Well, in that triangle, if you write cosine of theta, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over r, meaning that x is r cosine of theta. That's what that is. Now, if we identify how much is each one of them, we get x equals 4 times cosine of 135 degrees. Great. If you use your unit circle now, you get 4 times negative root 2 over 2. And if you simplify, you simply get x equals negative 2 root 2. All right, so we sure got the x-coordinate. This kind of tells you that, hey, I, if I'm on x-coordinate, somewhere negative 2 root 2 is somewhere that belongs to this part right here, okay? All right, so um, let's see, the y-coordinate. Because we need to determine the rectangular coordinates, right? So that's what I'm doing right now. So imagine the rectangular coordinates. That's what I'm determining. Okay, so y is, oh, well, let's write it correctly with everything r sine of theta. In our case, it is 4 times sine of 135. Again, if you use your unit circle, that's 4 root 2 over 2. And that's 2 root 2. Great, so we got our y as being uh, 2 root 2. And so here are the coordinates of the point. And now finally, I have to say that um, the coordinates, how do I say, point P has the coordinates x negative 2 root 2 and 2 root 2. And so we determine the rectangular coordinates. Now we're going to plot it and um, maybe I should leave this here and maybe I put the numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we are on a circle with a 4. I guess I'll leave it alone. Okay, that's good enough. And then we are at 135, and that's about where 135 is. <clears throat> so here we are at 4, and theta equals 135. Here's my point P. Coordinates 4, 135 in a polar system of coordinates. That's all there is to it, folks, nothing else. And this kind of matches the x and y. If you truly do it, then it's going to show the same thing. And one more thing I want to point out is the fact that, <clears throat> say here, for example, in a picture, Way. So at least you have an idea how to put them in a quadrant. Okay. I don't think we need this for now, but I just kind of wanted to point it out. I want to leave this drawing uh, untouched um, for the video. Okay, so that was example number one. That was pretty straightforward. Let's go to example number two. Or part B. Is this A and B? I'm sorry. Okay, so part B, I guess. Well, we are asked to point, um, to plot, I'm sorry, point Q, which is negative 3 and pi over 6. Well, we're going to look where negative 3 is. Well, here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So you know your point is going to be on this circle. And then you have to kind of figure out where pi over 6 is. So um, actually, pi over 6, if you notice, uh, this half a circle here is divided in six equal parts. So meaning that this line right here represents your pi over 6. But because you are asked to do negative 3 and pi over 6, then you're going to extend this 
So then the intersection right there, let me change colors a little bit. Here it is. That is your point Q that has the co coordinates negative three and pi over six. It's kind of similar to what I was trying to say um, above in that um, first picture that I wanted to keep uh, clean, I would say. So essentially this negative three gives you the idea that it's gonna be in quadrant three. Um, so now we have to solve to get the coordinates, right? And the coordinates that you get in standard format, they better also show in quadrant three, right? So the X coordinate should be negative, and so the Y coordinate should be also negative, yeah? So let's see what do we get. So for X, we get our cosine of theta. Our R is negative three. So remember this is R and this is theta. Yeah, so then times cosine of pi over six. And our Y is our sine of theta. And that's negative three sine of pi over six. Okay, so that's great. Let's continue in this format. X is negative three times square root of three over two. And that becomes still negative three root three over two. And Y coordinate for this point, it's gonna be negative three times a half. Remember these are taken from quadrant one, right from the unit circle, and that is negative three over two. Uh, so automatically gives you the correct signs. So Q essentially has the coordinates negative three root three over two, and respectively negative three over two, which by the way belongs to quadrant three. And that's pretty much what we were looking for. We wanted to make sure that we get the point in quadrant three, and we did. Just like the polar coordination, polar coordinates uh, show as well. Okay, we have one more here. So we have point R, which has the coordinates R and theta. So two and negative pi over two. So let's see where we are looking at. So we are looking at R equals two. So my point is gonna be on R equal one, two. So on this circle right here. Yeah. So I'm gonna be there. And then I'm looking at the angle that's negative pi over two, which is in that direction right there. So hence the intersection between them gives you at the point is. Okay, so this is R of two and negative pi over two. So this is at uh, coordinates that I expect here is x equals zero, if you really look at it, and y should be negative two. But let's see if we actually get that. So we have x equals r cosine of theta. In our case is two times cosine of negative pi over two. And if you continue, right, it's two times, well, cosine of negative 90 degrees is nothing else but zero. Two times zero is zero. So the good part is, yes, we got x equals zero. Let's see what we get for y. So y is our sine of theta, which becomes two times sine of negative pi over two. All right, so now you have y equals two times uh, sinus of that is negative one, so it's negative two. Just as I expected, y was negative two. So from here results that r has the coordinates zero, negative two. And that again is a point in between two quadrants between q3 and q4. But it is very obvious right now how they kind of work together and how you can uh, transform from one way to the other. And having a, a polar representation is just another way to look at a point in space. Okay. So um, I think one important information here that um, I chose to keep, while a given point in a plane can have only one pair of rectangular, only one pair of rectangular coordinates, 
this same point can have an infinite number of pairs of polar coordinates. So <clears throat> this is important because you can have um, a certain angle and then you can think about what other points can have that coordinate. So for example, if I'm back here, I can read that R in multiple ways. I can say it is 270 degrees or negative 90 degrees. So I can report point R in two different ways. Mm. Sometimes you're gonna be able to say it in three different ways or <clears throat> depends how many, how many times you go around the circle, right? So that is important to depict here. So let's see um, in this type of examples. So in other words, what they say here it is, if you have a point in space that has coordinates x and y, right? Let's call it point A of x and y. You can represent the same point A, right, in R and Theta's in multiple ways. And those multiple ways are typically co-terminal angles or multiples of 180 degrees or 160 degrees. So those will be the ones that you need to pay attention to. So let's kind of see how we apply this knowledge here. Uh, determine the following, three other pairs of polar coordinates for this point. So they don't want one, but they want three other pairs, a total of three actually. So let's see how we go about that. So we have our point right here. So the way you look at those is to find other co-terminal angles. Well, normally if I'm to go and graph this, there is no polar paper in here that I can put in. So I'm gonna hand draw one. So I'm gonna assume that you have radius of one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. So I'm gonna assume here's my five, sort of, let's see, that equals somehow. You know, I may as well just draw the circle first. Okay, Move the circle, there you go. So I know I have my correct five right there, so. Well, maybe not. Uh, actually, my mistake here. <clears throat> let me start clean here. Or maybe they let me, there you go, without anything. So now I can draw a smaller circle. Let it become a circle, I can move it, center it, there you go. So now I'm gonna assume that this is my five. This part right here is my five. So I know it goes through the five. Here's five, here's five, here's negative five, and here's negative five. You know? And then the other one I have to look at is 110. So, I'm sorry, negative 110. So I start from the x-axis, right, and I go down, and I go clockwise. So when I do that, if you do, um, let's see, uh, 110, minus 90, you get 20. So I'm in quadrant three, 20 degrees in somewhere. So here it is, okay? So this angle right here from the positive x axis going down is my 110 with a negative. So this point P has the R and theta, R is five and theta is negative 110. Yeah, so I have, I'm gonna mark these angles a little bit. So um, that was my theta. This angle right here is 20 degrees plus the 90, that gives you your 110, okay? And so the question is what other angle I can pick up that will have the same coordinates? Well, um, there are certainly many ways to look at it. One, where you have a positive R, and another negative angle. And the other one is where you have a negative R and a positive angle or a positive and negative. So let's see what possibilities they could be. So essentially, I will tell you what to do in general. Find um, other co-terminal 
angles. All right. So <clears throat> let's uh, focus on the positive one. So what other coordinate that has an R that's five will be in the same position like the current P. So if I am looking at this and I'm going, wait, wait a second, I am having five with negative 110, it's still in quadrant three, so both of them are negative. Now I want to stay someplace else, but I want to land in the same place. So if I start with a P, uh, I'm gonna extend this now, something like that, all right? So there is another way to land there, right? And that is to go around this way. So if I am thinking to go around that way, so that would be a 180, or I'm, I would say easy, 270 minus 20. Yeah, that's a coterminal angle in the same place, lands in the same place. So that is what, um, 250. All right, so 270 minus 20 equals 250. It lands you in the same spot. Okay, now to land in the same spot, but doing a different way of looking at it, I'm gonna say P has a negative five. So I know I'm gonna be on a negative part no matter what. Yeah, so I, I pretty much keep myself at um, quadrant three, two and three by looking at this. But now I have to find the angle. So truly now the angle, I can go two ways about it, right? So one is to say, I am, since I'm already a negative five, right down here, 250. <clears throat> so since I'm already in this negative five zone, I have to find an angle that will just kind of go from where I am at negative five going down this way, and draw it with yellow. It's hard to see. Yeah. So it only goes so far. So in, in other words, how many degrees, degrees do I go from a negative x axis? Well, I'm going 90 minus 20, I am just going 70, going down, yes? So I'm gonna say negative five and 70. And another way to look at it is P is negative five. And now I have to go since I'm a negative five already, I have to look at, um, let's see how much is my angle. Uh, 20, so let's see, 250, 270, so maybe I go around 180. Um, plus the 70. <clears throat> no, that's my first 250. So um, let's see, what other possibility do I have? Uh, 360 minus the 70, so that's 290. So I just have to find uh, what pairs up with this 70. So it's gonna be 360 minus the 70 which is 290. However, because I'm already with a minus here and 70 goes in one direction, which is going counterclockwise, you know, that means I have to go the opposite way with a 290, so it's gonna be negative 290. Otherwise, I land up in the other quadrant, opposite. So these are the only choices I can see. I don't see any other choices to land in the same spot. So just remember the bottom line of this is to find other coterminal angles and depends on your point of view. So meaning, <clears throat> are you gonna use five or are you gonna use negative five? If you use five, find both of the values, one positive, one negative. If you use negative five, same idea, find one positive and one negative angle. All right, so let's see in the next one. So the next one is a little bit more interesting because they don't give you the R and the theta. They give you the X and Y coordinates. So essentially what you are given here, this is your X coordinate and this is your Y coordinate. 
So having said that, that means you have to find who the R and who the theta are. So they ask you now for two pairs of polar coordinates for a point. Okay, so because we have x equals six, I don't have to do any more calculations on that. Y equals negative um, six root three. Again, I don't have to do any calculations on that, but that will be our life savior to find theta. Tangent of theta is nothing else but the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So that becomes negative six root three over six. Simplify your six and you get negative root three. So now one thing we need to find, so theta, it's gonna be tangent minus one or arc tangent of negative root three. And you will see that um, if you use a calculator on that, you should get, and make sure your calculator is in degrees, you get 300. Okay, so we got theta. So who are we missing? We are missing r. So remember r square is x squared plus y squared, nothing else but the Pythagorean theorem there. So we get that r will be square root of that. So x squared is six squared plus negative six root three all squared. Very good. So now we do a little math in here using a calculator. We get square root of 36 plus 36.3. And that is, I'm sorry, 36 times three, right? This is 36. So that is uh, square root of three onto the second power is just plain three. Negative to the second power is positive. So what do we get here? Four times 36 essentially. So that would be 144 or I can even say yeah, uh, two times six, which is 12, same thing. So one square root of 144 equals 12. Great, so we got R equals 12. So <clears throat> essentially I know that if I draw a circle here, I should be at that radius equals 12. And then I have to put two different angles on that. And I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm just gonna call it that it sits at 12. So here's my 12. 12, here's negative 12, and here's negative 12, right? So I have that and 300. So um, 300 somewhere in here, that's 360, oh, somewhere here. I'm, I'm not trying to be precise right now. It's not correct. Let me make it closer to here, yeah, something like that. Okay, so let's assume that is my 300. So here's point P, coordinates 12 and 300. Remember these are the polar coordinates, right? So this is my R <clears throat> and this is my theta. But they ask us for two pairs, right? So um, another pair could be if I extend this line, yeah, and I can call this negative 12, just kind of thinking if I want to land in the same place. Um, I'm gonna be negative 12, two pairs of corners to fit the point in this. X is positive. So I'm just kind of thinking I can say P has the coordinates 12 and negative 60, for example. I picked that, that's easier. Yeah, so we have P, 12, and 300. And then, so this is going to be my 300, and this is my negative 60. There you go. That's another way to look at it. <clears throat> okay, and now it comes the time where you will have to use your calculator a little bit for uh, doing some graphs. Mm. Some of them, the, the next two examples are actually not so bad um, as far as graphing them, but uh, this example right here, that's the one that I, I had a separate video of how to use a calculator for it. It requires for you to actually do a table. Um, and so do a, it's a little bit more tedious, but if you know how to use a calculator, at least you can trace it, okay? All right, so let's look at this. So find the polar equation of the lines in, in circles. So in other words, hey, if I give you the equation of a line, which is y equals mx plus b, right? 
or if I give you the equation of a circle, let me write this out first, which is typically x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? Those are like from algebra, if you remember. Can I do this using the polar equations? And if I can, what are the polar equations? That's what they want here. So essentially by writing this out, you kind of have to determine who is R out of your equation, how to find X and how to find Y, yeah? So I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna remind you that because we want the polar equations, remember the Y at the very beginning of the lesson, right? You're gonna use this knowledge. Don't be a stranger to that. Make sure you have it in front of you, okay? Why is R sine of theta? Okay, well, I'm gonna go back there and replace my Y with R sine of theta. I'm gonna replace my X with R cosine of theta. And I'm gonna see what I'm gonna get. Because in the end, I'm gonna calculate R by doing that. So I'm gonna replace Y here with that. I'm gonna replace X here with that. And I'm gonna calculate R results R. All right, so that's the technique. So let's see what we get. R sine of theta equals two R cosine of theta minus four. Now this is an equation in R. Our job is to isolate R, right, by itself. So we're gonna get here R, um, let's see, I'm gonna move the sinus on the other side. So I'm gonna get R, let, let me move it like this. So two R cosine of theta minus r sine of theta equals four. So what I did, I essentially added four on both sides and I subtracted r sine of theta on both sides. And that's what you get. Now you're gonna factor out r, so that's two r, oops, my bad. It's r two cosine of theta minus sine of theta equals four. So look what you get for r, r is, fraction line four over two cosine of theta minus sine of theta. And believe it or not, this equation is equivalent to y equals two x minus four. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I would say these are equivalent. So what do you know about, you know, when you graph a line? If I look at that equation right there, it's kind of like telling me that my y-intercept is negative four. So I'm gonna look actually one, two, three, four. So I know that I'm gonna go right to that point. And then I know my slope, which is m, is two. So it's up two and over one. which is right there. So essentially my line that goes through these two points this is the equation y equals 2x minus 4 or r equals 4 over um, 2 cosine of theta minus sine of theta. So that's another way to look at things. It's just like a, you have two pair of glasses, okay? <laughs> one time you wear the pair where you use X and Y coordinates, and one time you wear a pair that using R and, theta, R and theta coordinates. The good part, if you look at this graph, they put X and Y, right? At the X axis, they put X, and the Y axis, they put Y. But in the end, you, in the end, this is how, um, a representation of a, a linear equation will look like through the eyes of a polar equation. Now let's look at a circle. If I'm looking at this equation, I know that my circle will be of a radius of five, right? Because 25, okay, 25 is five square. So I know that my radius is that. So normally if I go and count one, two, three, four, five, it's exactly the last circle. I'm gonna to attempt to close the circle right here. 
with the help of the iPad, uh, you make it perfect. <laughs> so here it is. This is the equation of a circle. In our case, it's going to be x squared plus y squared equals 25 or 5 squared. So I know it goes through there. And so what am I looking at here? Um, it's pretty much is telling you that r is given to you. r is 5 or r squared is 25. So essentially by r squared equals 25, you get the fact that r is equal 5 or r is equal negative 5. It's sure thing. It goes through here's 5 and here's negative 5. So you know that it goes through those coordinates. All right, and um, from here, let's plug in x and y for, so for x, we know that um, just like we wrote above, right? So our x is our cosine of theta. So we have r square cosine square of theta plus r square sine square of theta equals five squared. You're gonna factor out r square and that's cosine square of theta plus sine square of theta equals five square. Here you have the fundamental trig identity that's sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta equals one. And you're running exactly into the equation that we identified from the beginning, which was r square equals 25, which gives you the two solutions here. And that pretty much tells you is a circle. Um, <clears throat> okay. Mm, that's about all I have on this one. Oh. I'm just kind of thinking what else I should have wrote. Um, maybe, no, nothing. Because theta, the sum of it becomes one, so that's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph something called a cardioid. Cardioid or cardioid, I heard it both ways which is nothing else but essentially a heart. Now they have multiple shapes and I be believe at the end of this, I put a uh, table. I think I left it here, see? So um, yes, there are called uh, lima sons, right? It's kind of like a heart and it has multiple ways to look at it, depends on the ratio of A and B, which is, uh, right here that if you look at it, it can be expressed either with using sinus or using cosine. So various ways to write it. If you have pluses or minuses and that kind of this ratio right here gives you the uh, way to look at it. And since I'm already here, I'm gonna fill out the table while I'm talking to you about this. So um, lima sons are in this shape, a plus or minus b sine of theta or plus or minus b cosine of theta. So when we're looking at those, if the ratio is less than one, you're gonna have a little loop right there inside that will appear. If the ratio is equal to one, it's gonna be in one point, it's gonna meet in one point and it will be um, coming in into a complete inflection. Okay, if it's between one and two, it's more and more getting closer to a circle. You know, it opens up. Um, so this part right here that you can see that bends in a little bit, it becomes more round. And if it's greater than two, it will start, start to go towards a circle. It's not really a circle, but it has a little dent in there. Uh, please believe me, you don't have to learn this uh, or memorize them. You can always use a computer uh, graphing calculator to um, illustrate them. Okay, so let's go back to our example. Let me zoom out a bit. Here we are. So the question in, in here is to graph one minus sine of theta. I showed you how to do it using a graphing calculator, but what if you don't have one or you have no access to anything? Just like you learned before, right? So what you learned before, this is nothing else but r and theta. So it's in other words, plotting points in this graph 
that have different R's and different thetas. Yeah? So let's see what, how do we do that. In math, anytime somebody's asking you to graph something and you don't have a calculator, you always make a table. So that kind of takes you out from hot water. So as you can see <clears throat> in this particular uh, polar graph that I have here are the most important angles, 30, 60, 90, and then multiples of them, right? So I'm going to write here 30, 60, 90. And then of course starts at zero. And then what else do we have? 120, 150, and then 180, All right? So multiples of those. I'm continuing, let's see, that, that would be 210, uh, 240, 270, uh, 300, and 330. Okay, that means I better make a table, show at least these points with these particular angles in it. So yes, it, it's tedious, but at least we we can have a response to it. So I'm gonna put all the thetas like, just like the way I um, list them over here. So what do we have? We have zero, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, okay, 180, 210, uh, 240, 270, 300, and 330. And then of course, going back to 360, is it's kind of like being back to zero, right? So we have that. Then we're gonna have sine of that angle. Why sine? Because that's part of this equation, right? Minus sine of theta. And then once you get that value, okay, I cannot zoom out and draw a line in the same time apparently. And then finally, you're gonna have your function, which was r equals one minus sine of theta. That means we're gonna get all the responses and then we're gonna plot them. It's just for practice, okay? Uh, truly, you can use a calculator. So good practice for your unit circle, trust me. So sine of zero is zero, sine of 30. This is where you need to have a calculator with decimal, right, in it. So if you keep your calculator in degrees, which you should anyways, right? And you, you know from the unit circle that sine of 30 is one half, but right now you need to write it with a decimal in it. So 0.5. Then if you continue, sine of 60. So at least I'm gonna round to one decimal, okay? So that would be 0 0.86. I'm gonna round it to 0 0.9. Sine of 90 is one, so those are important. 120, that would be 0 0.9 again, yeah. 150, 0 0.5, it's a reflection, right, from quadrant one to quadrant two. Um, at 180, you get a zero. And then you get all the other values with negative, everything else that you got. So negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.9, negative one, negative 0.9, and negative 0.5. And they are all negative because they are in a quadrant uh, three and four, and for the sinus, that would be negative. Well, having said that, now we can calculate the values here. So essentially you go one minus whatever we got here in this column, that's it. So if you're doing the math, I'm just gonna put the numbers very quickly. Um, you get a one, you get a 0 0.5, you get a 0 0.1, you get a zero, yeah? And this is pretty much where the center will be. You will see in a moment. I'm gonna actually write it here, center. Then we go back to point one, point five. Uh, we're gonna get a one. Okay. Um, minus, minus, this becomes a 1.5. This becomes a 1.9 a two, uh, 1.9 again, and a 1.5. Now that we have them all, you should kind of go in there and you have what one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth means. So you essentially graphing 
this point right here, theta, and one. Uh, so that's what you're graphing. So if you look at theta equals zero, right? And then r equal one. Let me zoom out so I can see them all. Theta equals zero, and then I'm this point right here. Next one, a half and a half. So a half in each direction, it will be right there. You know, why don't I, you know, I'm gonna change the scale because it's so, um, what number do I have here? So let's call two of this, um, two of this, I'm gonna call it a one, okay? And here's a two, and it doesn't look like I need anything bigger than that. So every two of these means a one unit. This would be a much easier way to see. I don't, I, I don't get to see them very well. So um, theta or x equals zero, y equals one. So it's gonna be right on the very top right there. Okay, 0.5 and 0.5, that means right there. Okay, point, I'm sorry, 30 degrees and 0.5. Okay, so we have a zero and a one, and then uh, 30 degrees and a 0.5, here it is. Then we have a 60 degrees and a 0.1. Ooh, that would be a hard one to see. So it's on the 60 degrees and a 0.1. So it's on this axis, 0.1, somewhere there, I guess. All right, so, so far I have this, this points like that. Let's zoom out now. Um, 90 degrees, I'm gonna get a zero. So I'm in a center right now. And then from here at uh, 120, I'm gonna get a 0.1, meaning I have to be, it's symmetrical through this point right here. So I'm gonna draw it. So it's going in and out like that. And then the next one is gonna be symmetric. So at 150, it's gonna be a one or a 0.9 or whatever it was, very close. 0.5, I'm sorry, 0.5, so let's see, 150, 0.5. It is. Okay, and then I'm gonna get at 180, I'm gonna get a one. I'm just trying to make it, there you go, so it's gonna extend. It should be symmetrical. I'm a little bit off here. But you, you get the gist of it. Okay, at 210, 210, which is on this axis here, I am gonna look at 1.5. So here's a 1.5. At 240, so I'm on this axis, I'm gonna look at 1.9. So that's a one, that's a two, so 0 0.9 is somewhere there, let's say. So I'm gonna continue with my drawing. And then at 270 is gonna be two, remember what I said, that's my two. So it's right there. And then at 300 is gonna be again a 1.9, so symmetric to that. And then at 330 is gonna be 1.5. So 330 here, one and a half, there you go. Let me erase that one right there and put it up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna change colors and make it actually look nice. But here is your heart looking graph or cardioid or cardioid. I heard it both ways, as I said before. I'm gonna leave the points so You have them all. So it's kind of like how you graph that. Now feel free to put this into your graphing calculator 
and um, you will obtain the graph in no time. So remember what I said, this is the uh, graph of a cardioid or cardioid because it's a figure of a heart. So it's kind of fun to do these graphs. I, um, I have a lot of fun doing them. And then the next set is, um, I think I'm gonna skip some of these tables. They are very long. I mean, feel free to make them. For me, the practice for you would be, how do you plug these points in, okay, if you don't have a graphing calculator? So remember, you are looking at the theta, you know, and then you're looking at R. So you are taking these numbers. That's what you're doing. So then you look for the theta using the lines here that you are given. So I'm gonna erase them so there, okay? And then you read the number that we established here. We said that our one was two of these units and our two was four of those units. The reason we make it like that so we can actually see, otherwise we'll be too tight together. You know? When you use your calculator, do a zoom to fit. I think that's better even than the square or whatever else I said in the video. If you do a zoom to fit, I'm gonna write it down here and just zoom to fit. It will make it adjusted so you can see easier on the screen, okay? Since I did a demo for the three leaf rows and so I did a demo using the graphing calculator for the rows, which came out to be a three leaf rows. And I did a demonstration for this. Where is this coming from? So just a second to show you that this becomes R equals plus minus three square root of sine of two theta. Well, you get that by using square root on both sides, yes? That's what I did. And essentially by getting R, you can make the same table again. You can make your theta, right? You can make your theta. Again, very important to, to think about what you're gonna put. If you are here at zero degrees and then you have 30, 60, 90, but your argument right there is two theta, yeah, you want to give the values for theta in such manner that you hit a two theta into your 30. So what I would do for that, so then it's theta and then you have two theta. My goal is to hit for the two theta 30, 60, 90. To, um, so starting with zero, that is. So zero, 30, 60, 90, and so on and so forth. That means my theta will be half of it. So zero is zero, no matter what. This would be a 15, this would be a 30, right? And this would be a 45. So um, in the end, you're gonna represent your theta angle and whatever the answer might be, uh, whatever the R answer is. The answer will be plus or minus the three square root of sine of two theta. So for example, for zero, sine of zero is zero, so times three, it's still gonna be a zero. So you will have a point that goes right through origin right there. Yeah? Then let's, let's do one more. For 15, you get a 30, and then you use a calculator, sine of 30 is 0.5, square root, square root that, and multiply with three or plus minus three, you're gonna get some like plus or minus 2.1. And now you're gonna have to be careful, you're gonna have to go for your 15 degrees, which is right there, and then 2.1, Depends how you <clears throat> stay with this, depends on your maximum. I'm just gonna stay with a scale that they already have here. In other words, I'm, I'm gonna say here's one, here's two, three, four, five, and so on, okay? So what do we have? 15, so for 15, you get plus or minus 2.1. So 2.1, it's here somewhere. So I'm gonna draw a point here. And so I'm gonna have another point in the other side. 1, 2.1, somewhere there. So, so far, you know you have these points that I draw with red, yeah? And so you're gonna continue for everything and you will see where your maximum is, but I will let you know right now that it's at 2.8, at 60 degrees. Um, 
So at 30 degrees, we get a 60 degrees for two theta, and that will become here a plus or minus 2.8. So in other words, if I'm staying here now on a line of 30 degrees, I'm going to get a 2.8. So it's 1, 2, 3, so 2.8 somewhere there at 30 degrees. Yeah, I'm going to be somewhere here. And then if I go on the other side, I'm going to go 1, 2.8, somewhere there. So I'm going to highlight these points now. Yeah. So look what you have, because this is going to take a turn right now. So it's going to come and take a turn and so on and so forth, right? Something like that. But again, you will have to, if you put plug this into a calculator, you will have it nicely. But I encourage you to do the whole table as a practice if you would like to have an idea. And uh, using a graphing calculator will allow you to pick this um, R and theta uh, from the graph. Now let's see over here. This is the equation of a rose. This is a three, three um, leaf rose. And I know it's going to be on a zero and it's going to be all the way to four because you have a four right here. So one, two, three, four. It's going to be right there somewhere. So that's one leaf. And then the other leaf is going to be at 120 at four. That's the other leaf. And then, um, symmetrical right there. One, I mean, one, two, three, four. So, equation of a rose, three leaf rose. Same idea, set your table if you want. Remember theta, uh, then you do three theta, and then you do cosine of three theta. And then you have the function r, which was four times cosine of three theta. These are kind of fun. They're not as difficult as the other graphs that you were uh, exposed to. But these are fun graphs, OK? So for example, if you start with a 0 degrees, right, three theta will be still 0, right? And then you're going to have cosine of that. That will be a 1. And then you're going to have 4 times 1, which is 4. So essentially, in the end, what are you graphing? You're going to graph the angle, right, and r, whatever the answer will be for r. So here's my 0 and 4. That was where the point was. So now, kind of give it a thought. How do you hit the 30 degrees? Well, you hit a 30 degrees by making the theta equal 10, because now my 3 theta is 30, right? And so my cosine of that, if you put in a calculator, is 0.9. And now, if you multiply that with, um, so you get um, 3.6, 3.6, yes. So that means that 10 degrees, so 10 degrees is hard to do. So here's 30, right? So then you divide this by three equal parts. So here's your 10 degrees. If you draw a line between zero and the 10 degrees, this point of intersection is the point you're looking at. And it doesn't match if you see one, two, three, 0.6, yeah, so it does match. And this is how you do it. And then you move to 20, uh, 30, 40. I'm just telling you, I did them all, all the way to 120, just to see how it looks like. And you fill out the table, and you're going to run into this graph. Okay. So now the only um, um, description here that we already kind of talked about it, this equation, 4 times cosine of 3 theta, it has, belongs to a family of called the curves of roses. And they are in this form. It can be either with sine or cosine. All the equations of roses um, have a graph that has n leaves, if n is odd, and has a two n leaves, if n is even. So if I say n equal four, then you're going to end up with um, eight leaves. But if I say n equal three, then you're still going to have three leaves, just like we had before above us. Now, the absolute value of a determines the length of the leaf. Well, that's kind of like the amplitude, right? If you look here, we are, we are set at four. So our number right there was four. Here, so this is my four. 
it's on a circle with a radius of four. Yeah. Okay, so um, we talked about the next one. Okay, what's the next one? <laughs> spiral of Archimedes, Archimedes spiral. This is a kind of interesting to put it in, um, in a graphing calculator, but you definitely have to use, and that was probably one of my mistakes on trying to find my window, because I was in the middle of using a calculator with uh, degrees, but you have to put that theta in the radians. So in the end, you can still make a table using, um, start with degrees. I'm gonna get you started on this just so you have an idea. So theta in degrees and then theta in radius. So when you use radians, you're just gonna do the conversion that you used to, but use a calculator, right? So for example, if I say, um, I'm gonna start at negative 360 here, or let's say zero, why, why not? <clears throat> That's zero radians. But then say, I say 90 degrees, if you put in a calculator, that's 1.6. Yeah, I know it's pi over two, but that's what pi over two is, right? If you do 180 degrees, um, that would be a 3.1, pretty much double. If you do a 270 degrees, that would be a 4.7, and so on. Okay, so once you do that, you get a very funny looking graph, and by all means, I'm not a good, drawing this very well. It's kind of like that. And now this extends to one, two, three, one, two, there it is. And one, two, three, four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. Okay, let's see if I can actually draw this nicer. Okay, and then this goes almost to five. So this is one half, and then the other part is symmetrical. Okay, and it goes through the same points. But try to put it on a calculator using radians and see how beautiful it is in the end. Okay, so my artistic talent here is not uh, excelling too much. I guess I should have come down more like this way. Let me see if I can erase that. Oh, it's kind of like that. In this particular, again, do a zoom to fit, okay? And then it will be nicer and it will not be distorted on my graph here. Okay, I think um, that's about it because, um, yes, there will be one more example I'll go over in a second, but. These are the, all the combinations that you can get. And I'm gonna kind of fill it out with you right now. So in a circle, you get either A, cosine of theta, or A, sine of theta. And do you see, this is only determining the position of the circle. If you have a lemmy skate, so something that it's like a butterfly, I call it the infinite sign, okay? R squared is A squared sine of two theta and it will be dispersed in these two quadrants, quadrant one and quadrant three, as opposed to if you have it as a square cosine of two theta, it will be distributed across the x axis. We talked about limassons, we talked about the leaf curves, but then the rose leaf curves, but then let, let me put it here. So if the n is even, then you get two n leaves, yeah, and n is greater than two, and if the n is odd, you know, if it's even and greater than two, you get double the leaves. And if n is odd, then you get the exact number of leaves right there. And the equations could be a sine of n theta or a cosine of n theta. Yeah, so look at it, n equal two, you have four leaves. Um, and n equal four, you better have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, the equations here are a cosine of n theta, and the other one is a sine of n theta. You know, many, many of these are guys used in, you know, um, 
videos for video games and any kind of animation. And it's kind of fun to know about them and where they come from and what equations they have. All right, so let's do the last example, which is this guy right here. What if you have a polar equation and you have to convert it into a rectangular equation? Okay, no big deal. We just have to look at what is given and what is not. So from this equation right here, man, I don't see no x and y. So you're gonna take that equation and you're gonna cross multiply So it depends if you have it in a fraction form or not. So let's see what do we get. We get r parentheses one minus cosine of theta equals one. All right, so I can look at this and I can say r minus r cosine of theta equals one. I didn't get my much ground here, did I? But so I have a, an equation either in this format or that format that looks better because it's not a fraction. So what do we need to remember? We need to remember that r is square root of x squared plus y squared. Yeah. We also know that um, cosine of theta, I'm not even talking about tangent because I want to use this cosine that's in this equation. Right, so it's adjacent which is x divided by r now my x is x, leave it alone, and r is what I wrote above, square root of x squared plus y squared. So now I have that. So essentially what I'm trying to do is I want to find a way to replace this r with something with x and y. Well, here it is, I found that, right? So anywhere where it says r, I am gonna replace it with square root of x squared plus y squared. And I wanted to find some sort of a something for cosine of theta, also only function of x and y. So I'm going to plug that in to my original equation right there. Lots of algebra in here. Okay, so let's do that. So instead of r, now I have square root of x squared plus y squared. And now open a parenthesis minus 1. I'm sorry, open a parenthesis, one minus cosine of theta. Well, that was x over root of x squared plus y squared. That's it, equals one. So now, um, that's how it looks like, doesn't it? Kind of ugly, indeed. So what I'm gonna do I don't quite like this. It's a super ugly one. Let's see if I can get this going. I'm going to distribute this square root through the other parentheses and let's see what we get. So we get, you multiply this with each term in our parentheses and you get square root of x squared plus y squared. There's another way to do this, but I definitely took the longer format here. Minus. Uh, the square roots here simplify out, so minus x equals one, eh, not too bad, not too bad, it's good enough. Now I'm gonna move my negative x on the other side or simply say I'm gonna add an x on both sides. So I'm gonna get root of x squared plus y squared equals x plus one. The reason I did that, I wanted my square root to be by itself so I can raise this to the second power, yeah? So I want to get rid of that square root because otherwise it's gonna be tough to graph it. I mean, in the end, I can make a table and be done with it, right? But let's have the table look a little bit more easy <laughs> to, to draw or to calculate its values. So we get results. X squared plus Y squared equals X plus one all squared. Cool. Now I'm gonna raise this to the second power. So I'm getting X squared plus Y squared equals first square plus 2ab, so 2x times one, plus the second one squared. Hey, I can simplify my x squared now and cancel out. And what do I get? I get some like this, y squared equals 2x plus one. Mm -hmm. I see. Or, this is one way to look at it. Yeah, this is a tilted parabola. 
or I can say in this case y equals plus or minus square root of 2x plus 1. Yeah, it's a horizontal parabola essentially. Anything with a square root will be like that. So if you actually make a table, now my life to make a table is a lot easy. Let me uh, zoom out if I can. I want to put the table right here above it somewhere. So here's my table. <laughs> okay. Mm. It doesn't let me, I don't know what's going on. Okay, X and Y. Let's try it this way, okay. So I can give some values here. I'm not interested in um, too many of them, but at least three or four values, that would be good. So let's give it a zero because that's easy for X, right? Then the square root in here will be a plus or minus one. Yeah. If I make X equals zero in here, there will be square root of one with a plus or minus in the front. Why does this go away? Hmm. All right, then let's make it one half so it can simplify with that too. So if I have two times a half, they go away. So I'm gonna make it one half. So that gives you, if it's a one half, let's give you one plus square root of two. Oh, let's make it negative one half then. <laughs> If I make it negative one half, it will be minus one plus one, that's a zero. Okay, so now I got the intersection points, which is great. And now we can make it four or two or any other positive number. Do I have enough room in this graph? Uh, let's make it four then. Okay, so four times two is eight plus one is nine, square root of nine is three. So I'm gonna get plus minus three. Now, I know that if I put these points on the graph right here, I'm certainly gonna get how the graph looks like. So when x equals zero, I get y equals plus or minus one, which are these points right here. When x is negative a half, y is zero. So x is negative a half, well, that's somewhere here. Ooh. What the heck? Let's see here. Oh my goodness. Now what? Let's try this again. My iPad got locked. I cannot even go up or down. And I don't know what this happened to be. How do I get rid of it? I don't want to erase my table. Well, that's an interesting one. Maybe if I do that, let's go back. So when x is zero, <laughs> uh, plus or minus one. Okay. When x is negative a half, y is zero, so it's that point right there. And when x is four, then y is plus minus three. So here it is. So there it is. Let me erase that point, okay. So my graph will look like this. It's a horizontal parabola. Going through these points. So truly, if you do a vertical line test, this is not a function, right? If you recall what that is, especially if you guys continue with this, but this is how you do this type of stuff. I picked a harder example here. You're gonna write an equivalent equation in rectangular coordinates and graph it, and that's what we did. That's what they asked us to do. And so that's our equation right here. And this is the one we graphed. Of course, you can use a scientific calculator, but remember the easy way is to get a table with small values that you can fit in the lab in a paper that you are given. Yeah, that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, you are done. Good job. Now do your homework and then, um, yeah, do your homework and then, um, you know, do well in the two exams that you have left, okay?
I guess I will see you Monday.